All right. Welcome back to Taco Bowler Gaming. My name is Taco Bowler. Today we're continuing our run playing as the Union in Grand Tactician The Civil War. Uh, it's been a couple of days since I've last played. But as I remember, uh, we're waiting for some of these uh, armies to get some more volunteers back in and get our field of manpower back up. Uh, we do have volunteers available at uh, 37,000. Um, but, uh, um, you yeah, we're, we're currently outnumbered, so we're kind of just in a holding pattern and kind of seeing what the Confederacy decides to do to us in, uh, in some sense here. Um, and we'll respond. Uh, this should have been a battle, I assume, that has already been completed. If not, it'll be a very quick battle, but I, I assume that that's how the last one ended, I think. But yeah, we'll just kind of hold here and wait for some stuff. Uh, the big question is going to be uh, the Cumberland Gap and what we do with that. Uh, what happens here with the Army of West Tennessee? I, I think right now the Department of Ohio can hold it out once it gets some readiness back up. But... Um, that's a good idea. Let's go through and make sure I can't do a perk on anything. Because that would be something that's good to do. We want those perks. I don't really create specialty, or specialty armies, which I know some people do, like a, a sieging army and then a uh, attacking army and things like that. I don't really do that. Uh, we're about 12 days away from the next militia act being picked up, as that will will help uh, some of this. Uh, yeah, the army of Shenandoah it's supposed to have been shoved back a little bit. No, they're camping right here, and uh, they're camping right there with the army of the Potomac right behind them makes them outnumber me for now. So we're going to camp here too. And not really play with it too badly. I'm hoping that the new camera position, I know it's a little smaller, but I'm hoping the new camera position for, for me will, will help out. Um, um, so yeah, last month, uh, that's, that's last last month. We need to wait one more day. Okay. We can wait one more day. Two more days. <laughs> there we go. Now we have a new one. I kind of wanted to see if there's anything. Yeah, no men have been recruited in the Confederacy. Um, that's perfectly fine. Here we have uh, 25 million in bonds. And uh, we have ships constructed. So someone um, commented that some of the ships in the navies have like a very low uh, amount that is... is you know, completed, etc., etc., and does that matter? Well, this is what it is. They were they were just not done. They were being built. I just had put them into a squadron for for my own purposes. So, here the Mississippi squadron would have been one of those that had a uh, very low uh, amount. But now they're all uh, they're all here and they're all 100% done. And uh, now I have six ships that are none disabled. So that is helpful, actually. Um, can I? What I'm going to do here is I'm going to blockade. I want to blockade their supply. And so I'm going to blockade right here. Try and blockade this whole thing so I can cut off their supply. Or at least make it come over the, the mountains like my own does. Because um, I would like to, to see that happen. Here we go. We can build a supply depot now right here. That is going to be huge for the Department of the Ohio. Because alternatively, we could have the Army of Indiana move on Knoxville, which would do its own number. Oh, something's here. But, uh, you know, their readiness is pretty low, too, so I think that, that they're, wanting to, they're wanting to hold off. It is September, so, one thing about this game is that I want to say November 1st, um, it moves to winter 
and uh, will cause great uh, penalties to your attrition. These army numbers are going back up, which is very good to see. It will cause great, great problems to your attrition, uh, increase to attrition and things like that um, throughout the winter until probably April 1st, I want to say. And so uh, it's not impossible to attack in the winter. It's just really hard. Uh, so uh, I don't plan to do so. All right. Uh, so I got to figure out what do I want to do between now and and, you know, kind of November 1st, where, where we want to, as much as possible, not be moving, but camped in what's called winter quarters in the game. Um, so kind of looking at this going, what do I want to do here? Uh, the Confederate National Morale is at 83, ours is at 96, which is good. Um, we've gotten most of these. Uh, we haven't captured Richmond. Um, that could be something we could do if we had a better manpower position, but right now I don't think that's something I want to push for, because uh, we would be facing off against all those armies there in the east, not overly what I'm wanting to do at the moment. So, um, that can't be done yet. That's, uh, something for, uh, 64, which I don't think I've ever gotten to in, oh, 62. Uh, well, we might get to November of 62 in this, maybe. We could try and capture 10 forts, so that's something we could do out west. We have captured Western Virginia. That's really, really good. I liked. I want to do that sometime in 1861. Each, each of my campaigns, like that we've done that. So the other thing that we can do in five consecutive naval battles, our navy's almost ready to try and try for that. Uh, but the navy battles increases your morale. It doesn't actually lower their morale any more than the battles themselves. That cause problems. So it is what it is. What we could try and do though is to cut the Confederacy in half. In order to do that, we would have to hold, so, you know, have it under our, our spot, Memphis, Tennessee, Vicksburg, Mississippi, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and New Orleans, Louisiana. Uh, this would, would increase Union national morale. Um, it's not vital, but, you know, it is a supply. So, uh, you take that for what it is. Uh, one thing I'm thinking of is if we can come down here and try and take some of these, that'd be, you know, a, a cutoff of quite a bit of money for the Confederacy. Um, we do want to take Memphis at some point. Um, we would be able to essentially take Tennessee if we can take Knoxville, which the Cumberland Gap, that's what that's for, uh, and then Memphis. But I don't want to move this army uh, until the Cumberland Gap is completed. And that's going to be a while. Um, that's at 2% right now. Um, it's uh, estimated construction time of 757 days. Um, we can try and increase that a little bit, but uh, that's probably not going to be going and happening anytime soon. So one thing we could try and do is... Um, Try and move. I, I'm looking at this saying that the Army of the West at 15,657 men is actually about full strength. Um, just about. They, they're doing very well for themselves. Granted, my army right next to them is not. Uh, the Department of the West is uh, still recovering. Uh, some of these divisions down to like 800 men. But it's serviceable, so I'm thinking that these two could go together and try and strike someplace. Uh, the supply depot is built, they've got plenty of supply, plenty of forage, they, they are ready for a campaign. So the question for me is, do we, you know, what, where do we go? I'm kind of thinking that we might try to get uh, along this river. Um, we might be able to supply ourselves coming down here. Which would mean, you see, this is the, the big question is what is standing in our way? 25,000 in the Missouri State Guard is standing in our way. We can't really take Carleton, Arkansas. We might be able to head for Tahlequah and Muskegee, Oklahoma. Um, Fort Gibson's out here, a fort. Otherwise, we have Tahlequah, um, where some of my family is buried <laughs> in Muskegee. And these are. Um, Small, uh, small towns. They're, 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 they operate the same way as, as small towns like the town I'm currently encamped around of Springfield here. Um, so 
that's a thing. We could try and go in there and cut off this river. We would need to have that river. And then the, the river would be supplying us a little bit from over here around... Um, which fort is that actually listed as? Fort Larned. Um, in theory, its supply would be coming down here. We could supply ourselves there. Um, but we would definitely face off against the uh, Missouri State Guard's 25,000 men, which actually would be an even fight. But it would be in Confederate territory. Which isn't great. What does goods and trade... What does that even do? Uh, yeah, okay. Um, alternatively, we go away from... I, I'm leaning toward armor gumbos, but I don't think we, we don't think we have river conflicts very often on the navies. So the alternative is we we spring from Stringfield and head over to the east, eastern Arkansas, go around the Missouri State Guard, which opens up the door for them to come back in and attack St. Louis. But there is a fort there, so I could respond, and that would be at least on Union territory. But we could come down over here, come down the Mississippi, and go for Memphis. Um, which would not be a terrible place, as it's where I often wind up winter camping the Department of the West. Um, but it would solidify most of our plans Mississippi and East. In fact, all of our armies would be Mississippi and East. But I feel like they're kind of wasted just sitting there. As far as supply goes, there's no uh, real stop along the way. We, we built the supply to strike west, western Arkansas. I feel like we should we should do that. So we're gonna wait a little bit longer for my army to get a little bit better and get some more recruits in, and then then we'll worry about that. All right, uh, Department of Pennsylvania and Department of the East is back up to uh, 42 thousand. We've almost built the supply depot. We probably need to wait for some more readiness anyway before we do anything here. But we do outnumber them. Uh, 42 to 37,000. We could bring uh, another army in. Actually, the army in New York, only 15,000. But could they do anything to cause problems? Maybe. I don't know what's guarding Richmond if these two armies are over here. We would definitely have to potentially leave quickly. But we could also kind of cut them off. Well, their supply is probably coming from this railway back here. And the supply hub right here, Harper's Ferry. We could go for... There's nothing, literally, between Richmond and uh, Fredericksburg. Fredericksburg is owned by us. So we can go for Richmond right now. If we move to Fredericksburg, that would force potentially force the Army of the Potomac to do something. How full are you? You're still good. Let's at least go on a scouting expedition. Nothing else. We can always turn back and go back up in this, this little connection here that we own. We can try to do that. I'm quite curious if the uh, home squadron is ready. That is supposed to have been fighting, and it did. So actually, 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 I want you on 
the sea. You come on over here, take this fort, Fort Norfolk, and uh, the city that the home squadron just got for you. We'll go ahead and do that. You're not currently building any ships, which is a bit of a problem. Well, okay, we're, we're doing something here with uh, Baltimore Squadron. Uh, they're repairing at the least. But it would behoove me, I think, to build a few more ships of some kind. Uh, let's go ahead and build some frigates while we're here. And, um... Do I build 18 of them? Or do I just build 12? I'm going to build 18. Call that good. That's going to increase our debt, but that's okay. At the moment. At the moment. Uh, let's look at our, our weapons ordering. Everything is still ordered. I don't want the planes rifles, so everything's still good to go on that front. Let's, uh, let's use a little more time. All right, we need to pause here because uh, as I wait to see what the Army of Indiana is capable of, we have a army that is fast approaching us and uh, is useless. They will very quickly bow to our wish. <laughs> uh, that, 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 that is not going to uh, stand up against the, uh, the Army of Indiana there. You're gonna arrive and then turn around very, very quickly. Yeah, we're going to blockade Chattanooga there. There's a lot of city cities in uh, Tennessee. You are turning around, right? There it is. The Union calls for volunteers to your contracts. Conference. Congress sanctions further enlistment, and the states are forming new regiments. This is a call to arms. So we're not currently going to actually form new regiments. Right now I'm waiting still for the manpower to start funneling in to reinforce the current regiments that we have. Who arrived? Shields and Paulding. Which is this? That's the Army of New York. So they've arrived. They, they're they not laying siege, though. That's an intriguing development. Ah, the Mississippi Squadron. Gotcha. So here we are wanting to... Oh, that's not what we wanted. This is what we wanted. We're going to come in here. And this fort should be taken at this point. Ah, they have uh, their food policy. Okay. So uh, we're going to auto-resolve the assault. That's what we're going to do here. And we're going to note that the James River Squadron is still present. And we are still able to fight. So I'm going to move against the James River Squadron. Glorious victory at Fort Norfolk. Uh, the enemy has suffered 11 casualties. <laughs> Uh, and uh, our casualties total 11, all of them missing. Supply situation is outstanding, and we have a new fort. Um, that fort is being constructed. I think that it would uh, do us well to uh, quickly... No, I don't want to manage fleet, I want to manage armies garrisons in Virginia. Fort Monroe is built, the Army of New York, and the Fort Norfolk garrison. Let's build some artillery to them. Again, I have 
no idea if that's a good thing to do or a bad thing to do, and we have not been doing a policy for way too long here. So what do I want to do? Do I want to move directly to Militia Act 4? I'm inclined to say no. I think I'm going to do Military Act 2 and then look at Militia Act 4. Alright, we have uh, enemy blockades. I'm not overly sure what is blockading, but we are attacking something. But we have captured Norfolk, Virginia. And the Army of New York now would have a chance to march on Richmond from the other direction. Alternatively, we could begin heading south and put pressure on North Carolina. Not overly sure which is better, to attack Petersburg and then uh, Richmond, or to try to head south. The, the trick with all of this is wanting to stay somewhat within retreating range. Um, so we do have some ports here along both of those ranges, and we can always retreat to this gigantic port here at Norfolk. But we would take some plantations, which does hurt the... Uh... Oh, stop. <coughs> All right. So the Battle of Hampton Roads has ended with the James River Squadron... Retreating, the engagement was a complete victory with the enemy fleet thoroughly whipped. Four ships have been sunk, one ship captured. The condition of the enemy fleet is alarming. The condition of my fleet is intact. And we are going to pause because I really wanted the Army of New York to be traveling by rail for that. That's okay. They can, they can move however they need to move. All right. Uh, hard to believe that they captured a, a boat that they don't have to, to do here. So, yeah, this is a... Uh... Uh, uh, river... <laughs> thing. So... Um... Not overly certain what to do with that fleet now, though. The blockade is already going with that, so we're just going to have them uh, return to full. Alright, so uh, let's see uh, the battles here. They're fine. And, um,. Could do this, but I don't think so. We're gonna hit administration reform, and we're gonna keep our military uh, subsidies for now. We do have a lot of good readiness in the uh, armies to the east. All right, so they're starting to uh, to do some stuff here. Missouri State Guard has shown up outside Nashville. I don't like that. I want Nashville. But, this would, that does mean they're not over here in Carrollton and Little Rock. So, let's take advantage of that. We wanted to move down here. Let's move. So I'm going to move you to Fayetteville, and I'm going to move myself to Carrollton uh, here in western Arkansas. We'll put some pressure on that and then go down to Fort Smith. Oh, there is an actual fort at Fort Smith. That's okay. We can deal with that. We might move over to Mus Muskogee. Maybe not. Not sure. 
probably would just take that and then move. Well, yeah, we, we're probably going to move over to Muskogee, Muskogee after uh, Fort Smith here. Uh, just so we can free up this entire river and then try and move down south of Memphis. Uh, and uh, if they charge it at this army, we'll retreat, but otherwise try and hold uh, our position. Uh, and we're going to continue to try and hold for the Cumberland Gap. I hope that we can continue to just hold the places that we need to so that it can be built. There was a project that helped to build railroad, railroad construction. That is politics, which probably we just spent. Yeah, we just spent some of that. Mm, okay. Fine. So yeah, I think uh, we put some pressure on, on Richmond. I think that's that's a good idea. For now, we'll just sit there with the Army of Shenandoah and the Army of the Potomac not dealing with Richmond. That seems fine to me. Uh, we have another uh, battle between the two navies. Uh, the Battle of Petersburg. And uh, they're barely afloat. I would like to see that they've dissolved, but it is what it is. All right, the Atlanta blockading squadron has arrived and is in position. Well, it's not actually. They've moved out of position. I really actually want them back here. All right. So the Army of uh, Indiana does indeed face off with the Missouri State Guard, and they're going to get the heck out of there. That's uh, not going to wind up being a thing. There we go. The James River Squadron disintegrates. Good. And the Army of New York has arrived at Petersburg. Uh, the Hampton Division is nearby. They're takeable by the Army of New York. We don't need to worry about that. This will be a thing still, but that's okay. They're still marching. Why are you retreating there? Not ideal. Is Sparta a major city? Not really, but something is there. We're going to uh, tell you to just march across the rural areas of Nashville and hope, or rural areas of uh, Tennessee, and hope that you can uh, kind of slip behind and get over toward London, Kentucky. And hopefully, we'll force the Missouri State Guard to move. Where is Petersburg happening? Okay, good. We're going to go 20 times speed. And uh, this is supposed to be uh, turning to port. They are uh, still coming after us. Not sure where. I want you to retreat. I would love for you to retreat. Or, you know, the Union. Which, of course, they don't do. Of course not. How much is a Western army? Yeah. Okay, so we've slipped away, and uh, the Missouri State Guard actually is 
um, chasing down the railroad, but they're chasing down the wrong railroad there. We should have taken Petersburg while I was away, and we have. That means... Go directly for Richmond. We're trying to get them to move. They have stubbornly refused to move, so... Make them. This is also helping. Alright, we're gonna go as slow as we can. We're waiting for this to stop saying retreating. We'll see. Ah, they're retreating all the way up here. Hopefully that will... will happen. That would be really good if it did. The Missouri State Guard did take Nashville back. Which is sad, but also it's not the end of the world. We're up to back up to 120,000, which is good. We have volunteers available of 100,000. Uh, and they're not really pouring in to our forces, so I do think that we should create some new things. So what I'm going to do here is kind of show you a little bit how I typically do things when we're in this spot. No. All states, that's fine. I'm just gonna create something here in the middle. This is just gonna be, you know, boot camp. And uh, more or less, um, what we do here is I recruit each division at the 2400 level here. And I'm just going to create a bunch of these. Oh, we're, we're creating artillery with that. No, 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 no. Um, we'll leave that artillery for now, but that's not what we're after. Clarland, we're, we're still creating full ones. Here we go. So that will uh, have a lot of the volunteers taken in. And then I just kind of create um, some regional sets and I just move things around uh, based on their state so Ohio would go in here and we just kind of put things in place Indiana is with Ohio and that middle ground and now uh, these do need to to stay put yeah Michigan's with that middle ground Kentucky's in the middle ground Illinois is in the west I, I do have this balanced out with several bits of experience. Um, New York being one of the the exceptions, you know, kind of. Uh... New York is is one that typically goes in the east, but sometimes not. Um, sometimes it'll go in the uh, Pennsylvania kind of central uh, central states here. Thank you. But um, so we have New England essentially the middle colonies if you will. Uh, with New York, like I said, filling where it needs to between those two. Um, typically, as long as you just create more armies from the, from the Northeast, it's fine. Both those areas are operating on the same general area anyway. But New York, and certainly everything north of New York, so uh, you know, Connecticut, Massachusetts, etc., is in the uh, northeast here, New England, and then we have uh, Pennsylvania, Maryland, West Virginia, D.C., Delaware, and New Jersey. Uh, and then I have uh, Ohio, Kentucky, Tennessee, when we can get that, Indiana, and Michigan. And then over here is Illinois, Missouri, uh, Kansas, when it matters. It typically only matters in artillery. California, Oregon is another artillery. 
Iowa and then Minnesota and the Dakota territories and stuff like that would all be here in the west. So you see it balances pretty well out. And hopefully uh, that won't destroy our manpower too badly. But that's going to be a giant amount of change there. And then we'll, we'll put these in the correct places. Uh, Artillery-wise, we'll put them in the correct places-ish. Uh, might just throw them in some forts. We shall see. Especially if we take these two forts. Might just throw them in that general direction. But we do need to uh, get them built up here now. Um, let's go ahead and put this in Cincinnati, though. Uh, just so it's by a bit, bit better supply than we had before. Halfway through this episode and have not had a battle we've actually wanted to fight. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alright, so we have a siege. Uh, it's not a fort. Why are you why are you deployed to defend? All right, so the Army of New York versus the Hampton Division, and we will definitely fight this, and hopefully we can win this. I'll see you. Okay, so the Battle of Richmond, Virginia. Um, this was a fight that uh, was a little closer than I uh, wanted going in <clears throat> numbers-wise, but still had a chance. Um, we were pretty far away from uh, Shady Grove Road there, so I'm uh, beginning my plans here, uh, assuming that we are not going to get there first. Um, that's just been the, the way with this infantry-only campaign, and uh, it's it just beginning to operate that way is, is a little bit better. So what I see there is that we have those two uh, roads, so I'm just going to make it so a division is going up each road there. We've got the cannons kind of hanging behind, uh, and indeed it's already taken <laughs> by the enemy there. Uh, but the, the good news is that when, because they didn't start there, they can't put defensive defensive uh, embattlements up uh, just yet. So uh, that's a good thing. Um, one thing is you can't tell the time with my camera down there, <laughs> um, so that's that's noted. Uh, but yeah, the, uh, the time was, uh, I think, I think this one was pretty early in the day, uh, so we're able to kind of uh, go here, but we're just trying to scout them out. And uh, you can see that we, uh, we've scouted them out and we, we see their position here uh, right along the victory point and uh, just kind of lined a battle uh, against the road, so I'm going to try to take advantage of that uh, and uh, not attack them straight into that. Now I do notice that as soon as they as soon as I move the skirmishers back, they are moving, and I don't really know what they're doing because I don't have scouts up. But I'm still gonna enact my plan, which is to head up this small little trail here. Not with the whole not with the division, with the whole army. Uh, to head up that small little trail there, and then to start trying to move a flanking maneuver with the cannons behind me. Um, there is a lot of swampy ground in that area, so uh, not not great. But uh, we're just trying to, to do that there. We're going to move up there and, and then come in on the flank. So I'm a little worried that they've turned their entire line and I'm going to be charging into their entire line. Uh, but at least it'll be in the woods and not in the wide open field. So I should be able to get close. <laughs> um, but uh, then he turns again. And so now I'm like, okay, it looks like their entire line is, is indeed sitting there. So, you know, I'm hopeful at this point. Uh, it is also worth noting that this, uh, because the auto-resolved assault happened on um, on the fort at Norfolk, that this army it does not have first battle modifier. The other army at the beginning it was noted that it was green, so um, I believe that they were in their first battle. So we're gonna. Try and decide if we're gonna put the cannons on the horses or just move them up. You know, push them up uh, so that they're ready to fire. Um, the cannons don't wind up taking part that strongly um, or that quickly. But we'll see. 
The divisions don't move as together as I had hoped, uh, but here we, we are surprising them and they're able to turn around and, and there is a flanking maneuver um, that's happening. So this is the hope, which we just kind of you know sit here in between and we have this, this battle that's going against this one division uh, here. They are moving some troops around, they're, they're finding things, but we're going. Now, something happens here. I'm not quite sure what happens, but the entire first division backs up and moves. Um, that was not my order. I think it's the initiative of the uh, the commander there, Mr. Heyman. Uh, but it backs up and moves. This one now falling back under fire and flanked. Uh, and then a cavalry charge hits immediately. And yeah, uh, I do capture a infantry division there. That is important. That winds up mattering. Um, although it doesn't wind up showing up in the casualty as captured. Uh, but it does show, end up showing up in the casualty as numbers. So you can see that the uh, victory meter there is way to the right. Uh, that winds up mattering because now two-thirds of the first division has already routed. You can see there. And then we have another one that is very, very close to routing there, but we're down to four divisions. So I'm trying to get those commanders to rally their, their uh, troops. But it's important because you can see that we're already really close to the victory because of that captured division. If we had not captured that brigade, uh, uh, the Confederate brigade there that charged, it would have been toast. Uh, but you can see there 3,000 to uh, 500. Uh, it may have just shattered instead of captured. Um, I've never seen something like that happen, but maybe that's what happened there. But right now you can see the cannons, <laughs> they're still trying to move, so I just told them to, to just lumber up and, and fire, but uh, yep. The enemy already retreating. We've got the the meter all the way to the edge. Uh, it doesn't look like they're retreating, but there was only like 30 minutes that we had to hold out, and so just barely trying to hold out the those 30 minutes, um, so that we don't wind up retreating. But there it is, 3,400 to 805. Didn't feel like a victory like that, but it was, and I'll take it. I will take it. Well, okay. Um, I'm really not quite sure what happened here, uh, but we have a glorious victory at Richmond. Um, 3,386 uh, casualties have been reported by the enemy somewhere, but only 61 men have captured. So I don't know. I don't know where they went. Definitely didn't feel that way, but hey, whatever. We have a uh, ton of Union invasions happening right now. Which is good. Uh, the Army of Indiana is actually uh, pretty ready. I want you to go to London. You're still retreating. Oh, so you're not ready, I guess. Fine. My question right now is whether these can handle a siege on their own or not. We're going to try it. I want you to head for Gibbon, and I'm going to head for... Fort Smith. Uh, there is an army, the Army of Arkansas. 6,000 men, none of which are currently actually in the army. Okay. Yeah, they have uh, one <laughs> right there in my big camp, too. So, it is what it is. Uh, but yeah, what we're going to do here is we're going to gonna finish capturing Richmond, and we're going to get that, uh, uh, a newspaper, and hopefully that will be it. There's something happening over here. So far, I don't see it. First siege has begun. capture Richmond by the end of September 1861. That's going to be huge. Richmond Falls. Confederate capital taken. The president flees. Southerners in shock. Union presses on. Special correspondence of this Grand Herald. 
Today's biggest news came from Virginia. The capital city of the Confederacy has been captured by Union armies. With the city in Union hands, the political leadership of the Confederacy has fled and will lead the nation from exile. The fall of Richmond has been received with great enthusiasm in the United States, where the president called it an important milestone on the road to victory. The citizens of the Confederate states are shocked. Their support for the war effort is greatly affected, and this and the support of the political leadership is wavering. Many Southerners see the fall of the capital as an irreparable loss for Southern prestige. Many Confederate volunteers see the war as lost, and desertions from their ranks are on the rise. What remains to be seen is whether the Union armies can take advantage of their great victory and push on to win the war. Probably not. Uh, not immediately, at least, but that puts the Confederate national morale already at 56. Uh, the capture of Richmond lowering it by 20 itself. In order to win the game, we need to, to get it to 25. Alright, well, I mean, they, they're the ones who refused to move over here. Not my fault. Not my fault in the slightest. So, we're still at green readiness right now. Uh, the question becomes whether we... Because if we take the front lines... Like if we can take uh, any of this, the supply line up there be huge. If we came over and took Stoughton, uh, they'd basically be forced to move out of Winchester. I guess Winchester itself is a supply area, but... But, yeah. Uh, I think what I'm going to do, though, is we're going to build a fort in Richmond at least to try to hold the capital of the Confederacy against attack, counterattack, I should say. They had a new day's MC in Richmond. I want this to be as close to the actual city as I can get it. That's, that's pretty close. I think it's close enough. There we go. Close enough. So we're going to have the Army of New York camp there for now. We've got our blockades going. And in fact, it may not... Well, our shipyards are, are taken up. That's fine. And yeah, the volunteer is available way down. So I'm actually wondering if boot camp is full. It is not. Uh, the Army of Indiana is encamped. Good. Uh, that means we're going to move you over here to London. Um, you may move along the river. And the rails. Uh, to get over there as quickly as humanly possible. But with October having arrived, uh, they've recruited 19,000 men. I recruited 70,000. We're not the same. And uh, we're at, at BB minus, which is perfectly fine by me. We have four armies invading. We have begun uh, a siege. A couple of sieges should have been begun. Uh, we're right here. So, um, that was going down, so I'm going to actually auto-resolve an assault, and uh, if we can take that, we might be able to reinforce Fort Smith, as we do have a couple of armies attempting to be formed over here in Arkansas to counter our threat, but that is fine. Army of the Trans-Mississippi. Not a lot happening in those armies, but I'm going to go ahead and end this episode here, and I hope you've enjoyed, and we'll see you next time.